Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another hobby tutorial. So while I was finishing up my World Eaters uh, playlist and getting out all of those videos, the constant requests in the, the uh, comment section on each video was, when are you gonna add more videos to your other Chaos playlists? Cause well, I've only actually added a Death Guard to my Death Guard one and a Thousand Sun Marines to my Thousand Sun Marine one. And the people get what they want. They want me to flesh those out, which I did promise in fairness. So that's what we're gonna do here today, start off that process. So we're gonna be working on another Death Guard miniature. This time we're gonna go for a Blight Lord Terminator and get that guy painted up and ready for the tabletop. Before I get into the video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, we'll be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If anyone's on the fence and thinking about joining my Patreon, some of the best benefits to doing so are a private Discord server. You get to hear with me and over 150 other people on a daily basis, talk about your hobby and other cool things. And two, you get an extra video a week for being a member of my Patreon. So that's 52 extra videos a year from me. There has never been a better time to get involved. All right, guys, let's get into this Terminator. And here's the Blightlord Terminator that I chose to do for this video. Really nice sculpt. Got his big chainmail apron thing down the front, big butcher's cleaver in his right hand, and of course his combi bolter. I'm actually a colossal fan of Death Guard, and I am looking forward to getting my force fully painted and on the tabletop. So after I gave the model the usual spray black and grey sear spray with rattle cans to get his base coats on, I moved over to Plague Bear Flesh and applied that all over the uh, flat colour of the armour. See, anywhere that's not supposed to be trim basically so any of the, the green plates like bare flesh is an absolutely fantastic color for base coating death guard armor and having that tone mixed in with your nurgle demons means that these uh two forces will match each other really really well so you can have a combined force if you so choose i always thought that that cowl thing on his head was like cloth but it's not it's actually some sort of deformed piece of armor as well so that got that got the uh, Plague Bear Tema coat as well. Black Templar was then used for all of the black parts of so his big apron, plus uh, any bits of metallic, so silver, uh, that are on the body of the miniature. You can get that done with black as well. It would be really difficult to try and get a nice solid coat of silver over that chainmail with the white kind of showing through with all the ringlets. So it's easier just to hit the whole thing with black and then go in with a little bit of a dry brush of silver later on. It definitely saves you some time. Obviously you get all the pipe work, the casing of the bolt gun, in between soft seals, which are usually quite gooey with these kind of guys. But anyway, uh, Volopus Pink was used on all of the soft parts of the model. So all the different armor splits that have like skin overflowing. It's kind of gross, but kind of cool as well. A lot of people tend to do these in like pallid white flesh, but I've gone for the total opposite. I want a really nice kind of pink, a uh, horrid kind of color. This pinky tone I've used in my Age of Sigmar um, uh, army for uh, Nurgle and also for obviously like Blight Lord Terminator and stuff have their capes, these kind of pinky colors. So we definitely know that those two tones go together. So what better way to incorporate it into the rest of the force than to apply it to all of the horrid split skin. As you can see, it looks gross, but it looks awesome. After that, we're gonna go for Gorgon the Fur. On normal miniatures, they have like belts and stuff, but for Terminators, that's not really the case. But anyway, he's got a wooden handle on his axe, so I thought I'd incorporate that color in there. Once again, helping him match in with the rest of the force. After that, it was time to work in some metallics. So we're gonna go for Balthazar Gold first. Obviously paint this onto all the gold parts of the miniature, so he's got some charms on his belt. The uh, head of the axe is also done in gold. And then a lot of armor trim. Not a lot of armor trim, it's actually not bad. But a few bits and pieces, just make sure you get it done, get it done nice and neatly. You don't want the gold anywhere it's not supposed to go. And also pay attention to the armor trim. So for instance, there was obviously lots of really nice detail on the back of this armor before it split open all grossly. So there are trim pieces kind of melded into those horrible bits on the back. So make sure you get them as well. After that, we're gonna hit it with the silver. Like I said, because we've done the nice base coat of black, it means we can go over the chainmail with just a quick dry brush of silver. And it does catch the chainmail beautifully. We're still going to wash it down and do all that kind of stuff, but it's a really nice starting point. This will be a much more difficult job if I didn't do the Black Templar stage. 
So obviously there's this, there's the rest of the combi bolter, which is actually a combi melter. Um, the teeth of his chain axe, the nails sticking out of the top of his head, yeah, and a few other bits and pieces like that. So make sure you get all of those base coated in with silver. Once that is done, that is all the base coats on the miniature, and it's time to shade it. As you can see, it looks gross, but it looks awesome, and it's only gonna get better from here. So, Agrax Earthshade is the shade of choice on the entire miniature, so we're gonna apply this to everything. So I'm gonna put quite a heavy coat on. Now, I'm going to be layering up and bringing this model up to quite a bright color at the end. I like my Death Guard, which is gonna sound bizarre, quite clean looking. I'm not a big fan of the kind of add loads of goop and gore and grossness and stuff which covers up a lot of the detail of the miniature. While the shade is drying, I'm gonna throw an interesting basing scheme on the model. Didn't really work out the way I'd intended to, so I might change it, but for the purpose of this video, it's done like that. Now, I really like the armor color as it is here, and if you like the dirty look to the armor, then skip this next step, because I think this armor looks really cool as is right now but I want to make it look a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to go back to Death Guard Green and I'm going to layer up the armor. This will definitely brighten the whole field of the model up. It'll match it with the Death Guard that I painted already. And definitely give you a sense of what they were before they changed. But like I said, if you like that grungy, oily, horrible looking green armor look, just skip this particular step and then do everything else I do after this and it will still look really cool. Basically how to paint both ways of Death Guard. Clean and shiny or grimy and filthy. So after I've layered up the Death Guard green, I really like that stage. I'm gonna go into Corvus Black and uh, pull up all of the black color. So obviously he's got the, the casing on both his weapons, both his chain axe and the combi melter. The back of the apron is black and obviously it comes around the edges of the chainmail, so make sure you get all that. And then there's just pipes and stuff like that coming around his neck. Looking slick. After that, we're going to go to Lead Belcher. We're going to do a little bit of a dry brush again on the uh, stomach armor. As you can see, it's quite light and I'm moving quite fast because I want that dirty brown in most of the recesses. This is just the highest point, so I want to hit with a bit of silver. And then if you've watched any of my tutorials before, you'll know that I like the touch highlight method. Just dabbing a little bit of silver over the gold parts to act as a quick highlight. Works a treat, works really fast. And with that, the gold and silver are layered. Time to go to Screamer Pink to highlight all of the horribleness. This is a very quick highlight again. Just on the very highest points, we want the kind of dirty, washed out, volipus pink stages and all the recesses and stuff still. Remember guys, my tutorials are based around the idea of getting miniatures painted super fast to a nice tabletop standard. I'm very comfortable that if I sat down for an evening with my seven man Terminator squad that I built, I could get a significant amount of work done on them. I think in one evening I'd get them all base coated and washed and the next evening I would get them all layered and finished. So two evenings of work and you get an entire squad done. Screaming Skull was used to layer up the bone parts, so he's got a skull built into his knee pad in the armor, and then he's got three skulls in built into his right shoulder pauldron. So they're just going to get a quick layer of Yishapi bone. Quick and easy. Get any pure white that you like painting with, and apply it to all of the bits leaking out of the armor, so all of the tubes that have like blobs sticking out of it and stuff. Just get them to a nice pure coat of white. After that, I'm just gonna go for a straight up warp lightning and apply that over those white bits, making sure they fully dried before I've applied the stage. And then this just, this just gives the like toxic ooze look of the model. It's kind of cool. And adds a little something to uh, the model. And with that, we're going to call this Death Guard Terminator, this Blight Lord Terminator, almost done. The last step we do is the special one, Gargax Sewer. What we're going to do with this is we're going to paint this into like crevices and recesses and chips in armor and any bits that have holes and you want them to leak out. So you fill the hole, you drag it down, give them that leaky oil look. 
and then any bits where the armor has split so we're going to go in for the shoulder for instance a bit in the recess to dirty it up and those scratched up lines a bit of gargax there too that just breaks up some of the flatter panels with the green and gives a really nice final result on our terminator i don't know about you but i'd be more than happy to deploy this onto a battlefield i'd be quite proud of it let me know in the comments below, guys, what the next thing for Death Guard or the next thing for Thousand Sons you would like me to do a video on. And I will get on it and get those playlists fleshed out for you. And there we have it. One Blightlord Terminator painted up and ready for the tabletop. Super quick and super effective scheme. Super pleased with how it turned out. And I can't wait to get the rest of the squad done. I actually have a seven man squad, so there's another six of them to do. But, uh, you know, Nurgle's number and all that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below, and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. Check out my Patreon below, like I talked about at the start. And if for some crazy reason you're not already subscribed to my channel, it means the world to me. It took two seconds out every day and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.